Mom visits daughter in the morgue. Discover something unbelievable. Immediately after one baby, Liz was born, the doctors pronounced her dead. Hours later, her mother visited the morgue, but when she held the little girl's hand, she discovered something unbelievable. Amelia and Fabian were over the soon. When they learned they were pregnant with their fifth child, a girl, they decided it was going to be a wrap and they would now focus more on raising their kids. Right from the beginning of the pregnancy, there were no challenges, and in Alia hoped it would stay that way. Unfortunately, everything soon turned sour. Three months before the due date, she went into labor and was rushed into the surgery room for an emergency C-section. Before she was administered anesthesia and Nalia couldn't help panicking. She had heard about several premature babies who didn't make it beyond birth. Still, she hoped hers wouldn't turn out that way. But nature had a different plan for her. When the doctors brought the baby out, there were no signs of life in her. In no time, they declared the baby is stillborn and whisked her off to the morgue. But they made a costly mistake here. None of them stopped to think that it was right to let the couple meet the dead girl. This was a hasty decision they would all count to regret. A few hours after the little girl's body had been sent to the mortuary, the doctor broke the horrible news to her parents. It was such a painful truth and they shed tears uncontrollably. For Amelia, it would have made a lot of difference if she had just a minute or two with the child before she passed away. Unfortunately, the little girl left without a hello and a bye. This was her parents' deepest regret. All attempts to see the girl failed until 12 hours later. By then, Analia and Fabian could finally visit the morgue to have one last moment with their dead child. Summoning courage, the couple headed to the mortuary hand in hand fighting back the tears to their best ability. They planned to just say sweet words to the girl and tell her they were glad she was part of their life. Even if they never really met, they were also going to promise to always have her in their thoughts. It was going to be a tearless, simple, and brief reunion, so they thought. Before they went to the morgue, Annalie took her sister's phone so she could take a picture of the baby for the funeral ceremony and also keep it as a memory. Once there, Ania got the camera ready while Fabian approached the coffin. After taking one deep breath, he forced the lid open, and right inside the casket was something they could never have assumed in a million years. If it was some kind of joke, then it was too expensive, and whoever was behind it needed to stop Agnelia thought. But when she looked again, she saw the same thing. Her eyes weren't deceiving her. The little girl was indeed breathing, and she even opened her eyes. I pushed the lid aside and saw a little hand. With five fingers, I touched it, and then I uncovered her face. Then I heard a little scream. I convinced myself I was imagining it. Then I took a step back and saw her wake up. It was as if she was saying, Mommy, you have come for me. And Nelia said Fabian was starstruck too, and he just kept muttering, It's my imagination. It's my imagination. But it wasn't. Their girl was indeed alive but how much she survived 12 hours without any medical assistance. Her parents wondered, but they were still so dazed to even feel any anger or ask any questions. They were just grateful God had given them their daughter back just a little while ago. They were forced to count their loss, and now they have been given a second chance to love and cherish this girl. Swinging into action, Fabian grabbed the girl from her weeping mother, and he ran as fast as he could to the hospital. When he got to the new natal unit, he screamed at the top of his voice, asking for someone to save his child. There in his arms little girl was very cold and he felt like he was carrying a bottle of ice. Soon the hospital was in an uproar. Everyone had heard about the news. So how did this error even happen in the first place? Earlier, a team of doctors had confirmed that the girl was dead. How could not even a single one of them spot some signs of life in her? Even worse, why was she rushed to the morgue without her parents' approval? There were so many questions and the doctors had no satisfactory answers. According to the couple, the delivery process was unprofessional immediately after the girl was born. She rushed off to the morgue 20 minutes after and Neely was given her daughter's death certificate. She should have been carrying her baby in her arms, whether dead or alive, but not holding some weird piece of paper. Now all the anger she had buried came back in a rush. Why wasn't she given the chance to be with her baby before she was taken away? 
My baby was born at 1024, and at 11.5 she was already in a coffin. She spent 12 hours freezing in the morgue. I saw the ice on her body, she recounted. The couple reported the case to the appropriate authorities. They did a full investigation of the hospital's proceedings. Eventually, all the workers involved in the case were suspended pending further investigations. However, the hospital's director claimed Liz had no vitals upon birth. On how she survived at the morgue, the doctors said the cold temperatures must have altered her metabolism and helped her survive. Originally supposed to be named Lucia and Alia, and Fibin named the daughter Luz Milagros, which means miracle light. Over the next few days, Lou's health improved. Understandably, her parents took her elsewhere, as they didn't want her treated in the health center, where she had been wrongly declared dead. She stayed in the hospital for 10 weeks and received intensive care before she was allowed to go home. Although her health improved, the doctors warned the family that she would need constant medical attention because of how fragile she was. For the next eight months, things went well. But while everyone would have wished for it to continue that way, it did not. Two months after celebrating her first birthday, Louie fell critically ill. Just like the first time, Amelia held her baby in her arms and ran to the hospital. The only difference was the girl was alive then, but now it seemed like she was ready to say bye. When she arrived at the hospital, little Liz immediately went into cardiac rest. Tragically, the doctors couldn't save her, and she passed away. The hospital secretary of health said she died of multi-organ failure and disseminated intravascular coagulation, which then led to shock. Before her death, she had developmental problems and was diagnosed with microcephaly. Annalie and Fabian tried to raise funds to travel to China with their daughter so she could get stem cell treatment there. However, doctors never approved of the trip because Lou's health was delicate. Unfortunately, this decision led to her death. It's sad that despite how the girl fought, her parents lost her not only once but twice. Although heartbreaking, her parents are glad that they had a chance to be with her for a year. Now in their memories, she was a happy girl, a survivor who defied the odds. They wouldn't have been able to say all this as she had died the first time. But now, if given a book to write her biography, sure there would be no empty pages. Her siblings and parents would all have beautiful things to say about Lou. What inspires you most about Little Lou's story?